Hello everybody. Today is the day that I show you why I don't want to sell jigs. It's a it's an incredible fishing tool. I think it was Al Linder that said this. It was one of the Linder brothers from N Fisherman on a DVD I watched years ago. That a jig is one of the few baits that'll work saltwater, freshwater, multiple ways to fish it, and it'll catch fish all over the planet. I didn't like hearing that because I didn't like to fish jigs as, as I was a worm fisherman growing up. That's if I was going to fish the bottom, I was going to be fishing a worm. You know, as I, I got older, I decided I'd try to learn some new techniques. When I got here is when I really started jig fishing because where I was from in Kansas, it was kind of chocolate milk water all the time and you'd be fishing a brush pile or something, but I didn't really see a benefit in fishing a jig. I didn't understand a jig bite. It's the exact same as worm bite if you're not sure. It's just a little bit different and um, you know it's one of those things it's an, it's an incredible bait as far as it represents a bait fish or a crawfish very well pretty much every jig can have some type of secondary action some of them are a little bit more simple but they're very versatile in the retrieves you can fish them on the bottom really slow you can hop them along you can swim them um, there's all sorts of different types of jigs you got we'll get into that in just a second but um, you know, they're really just a fish catching machine. It's something that for sure there's um, a lot of different ways to trick fish, but this will work pretty much anywhere on the planet. So let's get into the jig itself. For me where I fish, I'm fishing clear water reservoirs. I don't really have a lot of brush or things that I'm gonna get hung up on, maybe a rock here and there. So typically what I'm using now is either a plain ball head jig. This is one that I've made. And you guys have seen me catch fish on these before. And then this is the other type we use here primarily. We've got, got the lead heating up here. So you got a nice plain ball head jig. And that would represent like a crawfish. And then we've got a football head jig. You can see it's kind of shaped like a football. And the difference in that is this one is going to kind of want to wobble back and forth a little bit more. This one will wobble back and forth obviously, but it's kind of more stable. I'm not gonna get into too much of the semantics on jigs. They're basically a piece of weight, some type of lead most of the time. Uh, so you can get it out there and get it down into the water. But, you know, there's different components to jigs. You know, do you, do you want a brush guard or not? You can see this one has a brush guard. I trim all my brush guards. Um, I don't really even fish with brush guards that much anymore. This is a six cent swim jig here. Six cents makes incredible products. You can see they have really good colors, good paint jobs, nice eyeballs, the whole works. Um, and a good hook keeper too. It's a screw lock hook keeper. It's kind of a pain to get on the first time, but once it's on there, it's not coming off. So that's another style of jig. Uh, you got arky, arky head style kind of pitching jigs. You can see it's kind of a little bit more round. These are good for skipping back up underneath docks. They're also good for the clear water, uh, hard bottom reservoirs because, again, they're going to kind of sit like that most of the time. So if something does come down to pick it up, that hook's in a good position. Uh, you know, you got your mushroom style head jigs too. I don't have one of those right here with me. But it's that same kind of concept. Uh, it's kind of the, the birthplace of the Ned Rig as well. Those mushroom head style jigs with a tiny little worm on them, something that's worked in the Ozarks for quite a while. Um, you get on top of that, you, you know, you got your tube jigs. Uh, this is a technically, this is a jig. This is the double bacon cheeseburger coming soon. Sneak preview the bacon cheeseburger. You can see they're just a little bit smaller. And then we got the junior bacon cheeseburger. And also soon the slider. So, you know, it really just depends on the application. Jigs are very, very versatile. You can use them in a ton of different ways. I've been trying to decide if I want to sell them or not, though, because all these are great products. And I want to say, like, the Six Cents products run about $5 for this, something, $6 maybe. Um, but they got a really high quality, thick gauge hook on them. And. Great features, great skirts, great colors, but for $6, you could make six jigs pretty easily. So how does that work? Well, 
I'm a fan of Sixth Sense products. I think that they make really good stuff. They actually sell their skirts. That's something that I wouldn't expect them to do, but they do it. Obviously, you can make your own. I've got a whole box here of jig making stuff, skirt making tools, all that stuff. But for today's video, just to kind of keep it short, um, we're just going to go with a pre-made skirt that Sixth Sense made. I forget what this is called. It's like Ozark Craw or Table Rock Craw or something like that. But I think it kind of looks right between a crawfish and a bluegill. It's really good for the watercolor around here. So let's get into the components of how to make your own. Well, you could literally just go to the store and buy a ball head jig or a package of football head jigs and put a skirt on it and paint the head and there you go, you're making your own jigs. You can buy a package of jig heads for a couple, three bucks. You can buy a package of skirts for five bucks and you make half a dozen jigs for eight dollars instead of one jig for eight dollars. So it's something that we're going to get into this a little bit too. If you want to produce your own jigs or you fish jigs a lot or maybe it's Ned rigs or there's some type of bait that you want to make your own. Do It Molds makes great products. Um, I'm going to go ahead and probably set this up here in a second. Looks like we're about ready to go in there. But um, you can see the Do It Head molds that I have. This is a football head um, and the hooks just lay right in here. You close it up. Once the hooks are in place, you pour your lead in the hole. Poof, you have a jig. So there's a few tips that I'm going to give you if you are going to try to pour your own jigs. Uh, this is an older one. Uh, the same guy that gave me the lead pot gave me this mold. And you can see that's just a simple ball head jig. Same thing. It's got a spot for a brush guard if you want. Um, but basically, I'm probably not going to pour multiple jigs. I'm just going to pour one for you so you can see the process. Quite honestly, you don't save that much money just going and purchasing pre-made jig heads. If you're going to just kind of dabble with this, maybe it's the first time you've ever tried to customize your own lures. I go ahead and start with just a pre-packaged skirt, a pre-packaged jig head, um, you know, make it look the way you want to, pick you out a good trailer and go from there. You know, speaking of, of Bill, Bill told me, um, this was several years ago when I first moved here, that the only thing you need to catch fish in the Ozarks is a brown jig. Again, that wasn't news I wanted to hear because I didn't really like jig fishing that much at that point. But uh, it's something that, it's the truth. A natural colored jig, whether that's green or brown or black and blue, it's going to catch fish. Um, they just, I don't know what it re represents exactly, but they eat them. It doesn't matter what kind of mood they're in. Obviously, there's reasons to use jigs, but why should you make your own? Well, it's kind of like the five D's of dodgeball. Except for it's the the three C's of jig making. You cut cost. It costs a lot less, obviously, to make your own stuff. Um, they're custom. No one else is fishing with exactly what it is that you're using, which can be an advantage, I think, sometimes if fish haven't seen something compared to something that they've seen over and over and over and over. But it has more to do with the third C, which is confidence. You know for a fact that that bait is tuned up, ready to go, Everything's matched as well as you can make it. Now, if you present it in front of a fish, they should eat it. So confidence has a lot to do with this. And I think part of the reason I didn't have much confidence in jigs, I just kind of tied them on and hoped I would catch a fish. I didn't understand how they were made or really how they were supposed to be fished for a long time. So, you know, keep it simple with jigs. It's great to have really fancy colors, but a white jig, a brown jig, maybe a few times a year a red jig, and um, maybe a, a a black jig or kind of a, a black and blue jig for really muddy water. That's pretty much all you need as far as different jig colors. You don't have to go getting crazy with stuff. You know, keep it simple. I would say most of the time a ball head jig or a football head jig is going to be what you need. Uh, Obviously, there's different locations that may have some specifics, but some of the things that we're going to need to make these, obviously, 
if you're gonna make them with a lead pot, you need to do that. Brush guards, if you're gonna put brush guards on them, you gotta have hooks that match your mold. Uh, skirts, and there's also bucktail jigs. You know, it's something that you can kinda, it's more of a, a fly presentation, almost. But these can be very, very effective. It's something that not, it's kind of making a comeback, but not many people do it anymore. Um, and then you're gonna need some kind of paint for the ball head. Not necessarily, some people like that silver. Um, they like that little bit of flash and some kind of trailer for it. It's something that that's really up to you depending on what you're trying to mimic. Are you trying to make it look like a fish? Are you trying to make it look like a crawfish? Or are you trying to make it look like maybe it's a bluegill? Who knows? But they can imitate a lot of different stuff and as long as you're picking the right components, you'll be in good shape with that. So let's talk about the lead pot for a second. This is a uh, Lee Company 500 watt, 120 volt lead pot. So this thing gets pretty hot. Like it would totally burn me if I touch it right now and it's on three. So one of the things you're gonna wanna do before you start pouring molds, this is obviously a lot colder than this liquid lead is. Just kinda let your mold sit and heat and warm up a little bit. So I'm gonna put it this way so the heat will actually travel up inside that mold and start warming that up. While I have that warming up, I'm gonna get the, the hooks and everything else we're gonna need for this. We're, we're gonna pour a couple of them. You'll see it doesn't take long. One of the benefits to having a lead pot, obviously for baits that I make where I want lead inside the bait, I can weight them internally pretty easily with liquid lead. You can pour your own sinkers if you're a catfish fisherman or someone who likes to fish spillways and you're breaking off a lot. You can save a lot of money on sinkers by making them yourself. Um, obviously, you want to have good ventilation when you're doing this. Uh, lead's dangerous in a lot of ways. It's It can burn you, but all in all, it's not overly dangerous as long as you're being careful with it. Um, we'll get into the paint here in just a second. Get out of here. Got him. So yeah, we'll get into paint here in just a second. Let's go ahead and get a few of them poured up. Uh, we'll go over the different options and we'll actually put a couple together. One of the things with the old school molds, they definitely were designed to have smaller hooks in them. You know, rods weren't nearly as stiff back then. So the gauge wire on the hooks is quite a bit smaller than kind of today's standard. You can see the difference in the beefiness on those hooks. So you gotta think about that when you're using your equipment. You don't wanna be using like an extra heavy jig rod um, if you're using a light wire hook. You wanna be using kind of a medium heavy, something that's gonna have a little bit of give. But there is plenty of backbone in that hook to catch whatever bass you want. Let me grab the other hooks. I think this one takes these. Okay, so we're just gonna take, this is a high quality Mustad hook. You can tell they're, again, they're a little bit beefier than the hooks that used to be in jigs all the time. Got my mold ready to go. I'm gonna make my favorite. Oh, it does use these hooks. I'm gonna make my favorite size, which is 3 8 Now you can actually make three or four of these at once. I'm just gonna make one. I don't need to make a bunch of these. I have quite a few jigs made up already. So let's see if this guy is ready to go. So it's ready. As you can see, it's dripping like crazy. That's what always happens. All right, so I'm gonna try to get a nice even pour. Let's see how this goes. See, it sets up very quickly.
And my mold wasn't hot, so it didn't quite fill all the way. But that's okay. You can literally just cut that off, melt it down again. This one turned out better, it looks like. So you can see what happens if you don't heat up a mold, it may not fill all the way because it gets trapped in there. If it was heated up all the way, turns out good, right? So that's all there is to it. If you want to make your own, you just load a hook in a mold. Then if you wanted to, you could put brush guards in them right there. But um, again, I'm fishing clear water reservoirs without a whole lot of brush. I don't really use brush guards that much. You can always take your leftovers, put them right back in the lead pot, make another jig. I'm just going to trim that off. Trim up my flashing a little bit. It's not the best jig I've ever poured, but the fish wouldn't care. Actually, they probably won't. Let's go catch one on this here in a little bit. So this was the first one in a batch of jigs. I found like the, the third pour, basically, second or third pour. It's almost kind of like making pancakes. The second and third batch turns out better than the first batch or cookies or whatever. I don't know why that is. It was the same thing with jigs. I think that mold just heated up nice by that point. So again, now we have a really nice, relatively cleanly shaped football head jig. There are different ways that you can do this. You can use a spray can to do it and then some kind of clear coat. You can use vinyl jig paint like this. This is something, I don't know, I've had it forever. I think I got it at Gander Mountain or something. But it's a, just a vinyl jig paint, and that is actually what's on this one. You can see it holds up really well over time, and it does do a good job banging off rocks and not coming off super fast. Um, a lot of times, because I have an airbrush, I will actually take and airbrush these and you can see on this one that's actually got brown orange and yellow on it um and some iridescence but then i actually put a kbs diamond clear coat the same as i put it on the rest of my lures and it does a pretty good job when it's banging off the bottom but if you're just getting into this you can literally go get you a, just a 99 cent can of black spray paint spray paint over that. I would recommend doing some kind of uh, clear coat. They also make a powder coat bake on enamel that you can dip it in there, hang them up, put them in the oven, and that's a really good process as well. So lots of options to make that look good. You can just leave it a plain metal jig head as well and it will still catch fish. So Anyways, moving on to the next step. All right, so I did a little bit of minor cleanup to that with just a box knife, just to get that little bit of flashing off of there. Grab a throwaway brush. Yep, still smells like chemicals. So this stuff is really potent. Again, you wanna use it um, in a well-ventilated area. But I'm just gonna give it a quick little stir. You can see how thick this stuff is, right? It really, sticks to everything. So you can just dip these in here, which is what I'm gonna do. With a little bit of help from this brush. So I would typically airbrush these, but I want you guys to be able to see a technique that you can do at home. I wanna say that this paint costs around five or six dollars. I've got multiple different colors, um, but this is what I did starting out. 
to customize lures. This vinyl jig paint is very durable and it evens out nicely. Doesn't need a clear coat, doesn't need anything else to protect it. And really one good thick layer is all you need. You don't have to do two coats or, you know, whenever I do the clear coats on the jigs, I typically do two clear coats just to make it last a little longer. But now I will hang that guy up and I'm going to kind of keep an eye on it because I don't want a drip anywhere. So I'm just going to kind of keep spreading that around. This stuff doesn't take terribly long to dry. Um, and it's literally a plastic coating over the bait or over the jig head once it sets up. But it'll smooth out nice. We're gonna give that a little bit of time. Go hang that on the drying rack. We'll put a skirt on it and uh, a trailer and maybe go trick a fish. Maybe. So now we're on to putting a skirt on. I'm gonna use, this is another Sixth Sense color. I forget what it's called, but I like it. It's pretty natural. It's got greens and browns and a little bit of that kind of pro blue color. I don't know what technically that's called, but uh, this is a different jig head that I made up before this because there's no way, like that vinyl jig paint is very potent as far as the smell that it puts off. Even once that's dry, I want to give that plenty of time, at least a day or so before I go and stick a skirt on there because I believe scent is important. I don't think that you necessarily have to add scent to a lure to catch a fish, but if it smells wrong, they're not, they're gonna not want to eat it. So, pretty simple on this. Um, you know, typically the way a skirt comes in a package, one side's gonna be a little bit longer than the other. This is almost right in the middle. I'm gonna move that just a little bit. Put your long side up towards the bait because when it folds back over, it'll make it about the same length. Put that light blue on the bottom, kind of like a belly if it was a little sunfish or something on the bottom or a bait fish of some kind. But to me, this is a great crawfish imitator. I'm gonna put a crawfish trailer on the back of this. So again, I don't have a whole lot invested in this because Bill was nice enough to let me have his lead pot, and then he also gave me a mold to use. But if you're gonna buy a lead pot and a mold, I wanna say that's a $150 investment. So unless you're fishing a lot of jigs, you probably don't wanna do it. But um, it's a lot of fun. You can make all sorts of stuff. You can make your own Ned rigs, you can make your own weights, and you can make your own jigs. So now let's finish this off. Gonna need to make it look like a crawfish. Little tip for you, if you're ever in Springfield, Missouri, they have a outlet store next to the Bass Pro Shops. I swooped as many of these as I could find. Um, I'm not sure what's wrong with these. I'm assuming it's not the way the laminate color was supposed to be. I don't know what this color would even be. It's kind of like a green pumpkin with red flake on one side and then that pro blue on the other. So I'm going to match this up. So I'm going to spin that skirt around where the, the blue's on top. A lot of times crawfish in the Ozarks here will have kind of some, some blue on their nose and then the tips of their tail and their, their pinchers. So that iridescent blue is actually a pretty good color. Okay, so sometimes you're going to want to actually trim a trailer up. This one fits pretty good. And if you look at where that skirt comes to, that's about the right profile. But I am going to trim that skirt up just a little bit to where basically right at the bottom of the hook is kind of what I like to do. Again, I'm fishing clear water. There's a lot of spotted bass. There's a lot of smallmouth bass. I kind of like the smaller profile jig a lot of times. 
There are times giant mop style jigs and really, really big trailers and really, really big baits will totally outperform and catch more fish. This is just what I prefer for bull shoals in Norfolk. That's actually a great color for bull shores in Nor Norfolk. So, um, to make your plastics last a little longer and stay on there a little better, I like to put one little dab of super glue. This is a extended control time super glue. So not a lot, just a little bit. That'll wind up inside the bait, stuck to the metal, and that won't come off. Okay, so we got our trailer on there. I'm gonna try to keep it nice and straight. And that is ready to catch fish. It's a good looking bait. So we'll go out, we'll see if we can't trick something on this. And again, I don't use a brush guard. This is where if I had a brush guard, um, for example, on this bait, same way I trim the skirt, I also kind of match that brush guard right across there like that is where I would cut that off. Long enough that it still covers, but easier for it to pass down, not quite as much resistance up here. So, I hope, uh, hope that answers any questions you might have on making jigs. A lot of times I actually prefer the ball head jig to the football jig, but again, it's just kind of how they walk around on the bottom, work their way through rocks. I did want to show you guys one little secret too. This is something that's starting to come out. I know Mike Iconelli's talked about this a little bit on his channel, but this is something that's worked in the Ozarks for a long time. It's something that works for trout. Let me go grab one. There's a company um, that makes tiny little crappie football head jigs. Kind of like this is a tiny little swim jig head compared to, you can see the difference in the size of those, right? So if you take one of these tiny little 64th ounce, 32nd ounce football head jigs, paint them up, put a tiny little skirt on them, and then put one of these Ned Rig bakes off the back of them, they can really catch fish. Um, actually, that big smallmouth that Tammy caught was on a little bitty micro football jig. And she caught about a three, three and a, well, we'll say a three pound smallmouth. We didn't weigh it, but, but it was a nice one. So, you know, sometimes big profile jigs are going to be what you want to use. Sometimes small profile jigs. Sometimes you're going to want to drag them on the bottom. Sometimes you're going to want to hop them. Sometimes you're going to want to swim them. Um, but, you know, it really just kind of comes down to the conditions that you're fishing, what that dictates, and being able to adjust as an angler to go out and catch the fish that you're after. Uh, you know, there's no magic lure. They are all tools to help you catch more fish. And on any given day, this right here can catch as much as anything in your tackle box. So hopefully you can understand now why I don't want to sell these. Um, I would literally have to charge close to $6 a jig by the time it came with a trailer and a skirt and it was painted and labor and packaging and it's just not worth it. There's already a lot of companies out there that um, make really good quality products. There's a lot of companies out there like Do It Molds that will help you do it yourself. And you can make really high quality products at home for not very much money. Uh, you know, you can, you can order a pizza and spend 20 bucks or you can make a pizza and spend a fraction of that. So it's kind of the same concept. But, um, you know, if you're not making... I would say at least dozens of jigs a year. It's probably not really ever going to pay for itself. If you want a cool hobby, if you want something that uh, you can actually take out and use and catch fish and trick fish with, it's a great place to start without having to invest a ton of money. Um, and if you don't want to do the lead pot thing, if you don't want to get the molds, you can always just go buy pre-made jig heads, whether that's Football, ball head, swing head, darter head. They, they make so many different types of jigs, and the reason they do is because they work. 
So I would highly encourage you if you don't make your own fishing equipment, start with this guy. If nothing else, it's only a couple pieces. You can buy them all pre-made. You can buy them pre-painted, but um, you know, start start customizing your fishing tackle a little bit. Remember, it's the three C's. You got the cost. You got the fact that it's custom. You can make it whatever you want, and that's going to give you confidence. And confidence typically means you're going to catch more fish. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this today. I hope uh, this kind of explains why I don't really want to sell jigs, even though they're a fantastic fish catching machine. It's not really my niche. Um, it's something that I do enjoy fishing jigs. I do think they're great to fish with, but you should make your own. You should totally get into making fishing equipment, go down that rabbit hole. I don't know. You're listening to a random guy on YouTube's advice, so it's kind of up to you what happens. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the content today. I think that this is a great place for you to start making lures if you want to, and I would highly recommend it. Thank you so much for supporting Matt the Baiter, for supporting Bass Food Baits, and for giving us the chance to chase the American dream, start a company, and create awesome products for all of you out there. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon. That caught something. That'll get something right there. Yep, you were right. Hey. Called it for you, bud. Sorry, I just felt it was time. I hope so. If not, you're snagged on something kind of out there. Yeah, it's swimming. Good job, nut man. Here. Here, I'll get it, I'll get it. You got it? You want to hold your rod? No. no. <laughs> you uh, have the pliers though. I'll see why not. You behave yourself.